Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, I'm going to show you how I made this image here. Kind of an artistic-looking flower image. It's all done with textures. I'm using Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox, and Photoshop. So, without any further ado, let's get started. We're starting out in Photoshop. Now, I've already duplicated my background layer and called it Topaz Studio 2. Because next, I'm going up to my filters, and I'm going to find Topaz Studio 2 and go ahead and launch that. And we'll get started by adding some textures to this image. This is going to be very simple, but I love textures. Textures can give you some very artistic and creative effects. Let's go ahead and add filter and come down to the stylistic section, which I still say should be called the creative section. And let's uh, find our texture uh, filter and click on it right here. And we'll see we're greeted with a texture. That's not the texture I want. But one thing I do want to say, let me uh, click the sidebar here so we can see the original image. One thing I want to say about uh, texturing is that whenever you have a image with a nice plain background, that's an image that really will take a texture well. And I think you'll have good success with it. So that's a tip for you. So bear that one in mind. Let me go ahead and reactivate this filter by clicking the eye right here. Now, when I do that, you notice I don't see the filter uh, here. So all I need to do is come here where it says texture, click right here, and my filter comes back up. Now, I have a uh, texture in mind for this. Now, we have, uh, before I show you how I'm going to find it, uh, we have a group here. Right now, it's set for all, but you can, you know, break it down into borders, custom, and so on and so forth, dust, scratches. And we also have categories. So if you click this drop down, you'll see a bunch of different uh, groups of textures in here. Now, they're all broken down in different groups. And whenever you install your own textures, they're going to be found in here. And I have the texture I want to use today is found in this one of these uh, flypaper uh, groups here. And uh, these are textures that I've purchased. And anytime you install textures, they're going to be found here. And uh, I have video showing you how to install texture. So just look on my uh, YouTube channel and you'll find them. And if you have a texture you want to use and you know the name of it, all you need to do is come to this little search icon right here, give it a click and type in the name of the texture. Mine's called Dawn Grunge. And you'll get different suggestions here. And it happens to be the first one right here. So I'm just going to click that. And there's Dawn Grunge. Now notice one thing. It's set in the normal blend mode at a 50% opacity. And that's the way the textures always start. Now you may look at this and say, oh my gosh, that is horrible. What am I going to do with that? But I like to use uh, textures in the normal blend modes. But a lot of times when you do that, you got to really pull the opacity back to make them look right. And you're probably going to need to mask it off different parts of the flower if you don't want it there. I also like to use uh, blend modes. Now, let me show you. I'm going to take this opacity and take it the whole way up to 100%. And that's what my texture looks like right there. Okay, kind of ugly, right? But check this out. I'm going to go through the blend modes here. Here's another very good tip. Always go through your blend modes. Now, you're going to find uh, certain blend modes are going to work better than others, but I recommend going through them all because sometimes you may be pleasantly surprised. A blend mode you didn't think would work may work really well. And when you hover over these blend modes, you're going to see the effects. See, like, multiply looks pretty good. It's a little too strong, so I could pull the opacity back. But I'm just going to go through some of these ones here and see what we look see what kind of a look we get. But look at that. It looks pretty cool. I might have to lighten it up and do some things if I wanted to use it. But I have a blend mode in mind today for the one I want to use. But again, this is my tip. Go through all of these. And I think the blend mode that I chose was overlay. So soft light. Overlay, soft light, multiply are really good blend modes. Hard light can be a good one as well as vivid light and linear light as well. But try them all. They're all going to give you different effects. Like look at that one. Difference, exclusion. There's one called subtract. Now, that looks pretty cool, too. But I'm going to go with overlay. But remember, go through all the different blend modes. And then adjust your opacity and see what you think you might want to do with it. You know, you might want to leave it at full strength. And on this one, I like it full, but I think I'm just going to back it off just a little bit right there. It's giving me a nice artistic look. And now I'll just take a little bit of time and study, the, study your image and see, you know, do I want to remove some of this texture off this flower here? I don't mind it up on all these petals here, but right here it's a little bit strong and I might want to ease that off. So what I do, I'd click on the um, add a mask icon, layer mask icon, and get yourself a brush. And I don't want to take it the whole way off, so I'm going to adjust this transparency, you know, about halfway up, somewhere around in here. 
and I'm going to use, I'm going to shut my edge wear off. I'm going to have a very soft brush here and I'm just going to just, I think, remove it a little bit here. Just right, see there, just take a little bit of that off and I might take a little bit of this off as well. Masking is a great friend of yours when you're working with textures, okay? So I think that looks good. Um, I'm going to leave it go at that. Now I'm going to come up here to add filter. I'm going to add one more texture. So let's go ahead and grab another texture filter. And one of the things I really love about Topaz Studio 2, and that is that you can add another texture filter on top of another texture filter, as many as you want. And you can stack up any of the filters that uh, are available in Topaz Studio 2. The second and final texture I want to use is found in this uh, category called, uh, what is it? Paper paper and textiles right here. Now this particular uh, texture is a part of Topaz Studio 2. When you purchase Topaz Studio 2, it comes with it. And it's the second one right here. And I use it a lot. I really like it. It's called Banana Pie. So let me go ahead and click on that. All right. And again, it's in the 50% uh, opacity and the normal blend mode. And the blend mode I want for this one, I know is gonna be Vivid Light. So I'm gonna go right down to Vivid Light and click on that. Now let me go ahead and pull the opacity up the whole way. But look how artistic that looks. But I think I like it at the full opacity. Let me just pull it back a little bit. Yeah, I might just ease it off just a little bit. I think right there. I didn't mention this on the uh, first texture, but you also have a bunch of other things you can do with your textures. You know, you can flip them horizontally vertically you can invert them you can adjust their brightness their contrast you can give them more or less detail you can work with the saturation you can even uh, use color strength to add a secondary color in on top of the texture if you'd like to and I want to point out there is a little piece of hair on this texture that I don't really like and these two little dots right here now I thought I could take care of this uh, with the healing tool right here but the healing tool does not work on textures and I don't know why that is I think that's something Topaz needs to address and fix but for now that doesn't work so I'll take care of that in Photoshop I think I'm finished here in Topaz Studio 2 but study your image and make sure you're totally happy with it you know what? I think I might want the second texture to come out a little bit more. So I'm I'm just going to take its detail slider and move it to the right. See how that texture really starts to pop through there? Now I could give it tons of texture and that looks really cool, right? But I think I'll pull it back and just add a little bit of extra texture to it. Because I think it's going to really add to the artistic look and I like it. So we've come from here and went to here. But I think we have a piece of art now. Now, if you're totally satisfied with your image, all you need to do is come up here to accept. Give that a click and that sends us right back into Photoshop. Here in Photoshop, the only thing I need to do is get rid of this little hair here and this dot here, this dot, and maybe this one here. And to do that, I'm, a, I'm going to use a, a healing tool, spot healing tool. So I'm just going to type J to get that tool up. And I'm just going to paint across this. Oh, you know what? I'm doing wrong here because I just did it on the layer itself. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that and get myself a blank layer. I'm glad I made that mistake. I very rarely make that mistake, but I never like to heal on the actual pixel layer. So put yourself a blank layer up and make sure you have sample all layers checked on. Because if you don't, this uh, technique won't work. And so now all you have to do is paint over that same hair. And now I'm not painting over my pixel layer. Very important because you never want to paint on your pixel layer when you're doing this kind of stuff like cloning and healing. I always recommend using a blank layer. And this little piece of uh, leaf coming out here, I might want to get rid of it. It might be a little distracting. So I'm just going to paint over that with this healing brush, which is amazing in Photoshop. But there we go. So again, we started out with this image and we end up with this piece of art. What do you think? Well, there you go. I finished it off with a little digital mat. I used Topaz Studio 2 to do that. And I have video showing you how to do that if you look through my YouTube videos. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one today. Please leave comments and questions in the comment section below. I'd really love to hear from you. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.